Good morning, good day, good evening, good afternoon, whichever time of the day it is you're watching this. It's E.T. back in the shed. I am working on the engine and it's time to get the piston rings on the piston. Get that on the small end, on the con rod. And then put the gaskets on, put the barrel on, put the head on, torque it down. And start rebuilding the engine. Um, right, so let's take a little look at this piston for a start. You've got to have an arrow on the front there that goes to the bottom or you know, pointing down, sort of thing, like so. Uh, here are the rings, there are three. There is a ring one and ring two, and this little spring ring goes inside the bottom one, thus. Okay, now these are called um, keystone rings because you have top surface is chamfered inwards and the bottom surface is just flat as you can sort of make out there can't you you can see that that's chamfered in because of I've just told you <laughs> well the chamfered area goes uppermost not the flat area the flat area that flat side has to go down Okay, so first of all, I'm going to put the bottom ring on. That, that means installing that spring clip first, and then the lower. It doesn't matter which. These are both identical. Uh, it does say in the manual that one's chrome plated for extra longevity, but I can't see any chrome plating on on any of these. They both seem to be exactly the same there. Okie dokie. Let's. I've just given this a wipe over to get rid of any bits of grit. We have two little pins there. One and two. That is two. go in that groove there when that piston ring squeezed together that should be uh, there and there so the the gaps aren't uh, in line with each other because that would allow gases through uh, much more easily down the side of the barrel right I'm gonna sit you in your in your stand and we'll go from there oh I have a little surprise I have uh, another bike um, it's not here I need to pick it up and bring it home at some point. Uh, it's a classic, it's a 1978 Pooch. Yes, Pooch, I hear you cry. Yes, the German Pooch brand. So, can't wait to get my teeth stuck into that. That's going to be um, a winter project. Because um, the Honda's next, then the Aerial 3, then the Pooch. But uh, I need to pick the Pooch up and bring it back here, uh, as and when. I can so there we go yeah there's another little diagram showing that keystone um, part of the ring there it shows that one deeper than that one doesn't it because of the spring let's have a look because I couldn't see any difference but let's not rely on on that I will get my vernier gauge out and we will have a look Okay, let's have a look at this one. Okay. Off. 1.92 mil. Let's zero that back out. That's 1.90. So 1.90. What was that, the first one? 1.91, wasn't it? Four. Okay, so according to that, that's the smallest one. So that will be the bottom ring, and that will be the top ring. Okay, let's uh, turn that back off. There you go. Isn't it nice to see a nice, tidy, well-organised shed? Tools are where they're supposed to be. Everything's laid out. Uh, not like so. Tell me, guys, I, to you two-stroke fellas, there is the reed valve. Okay, that's the reed valve there. That's the bump stop, if you like, to stop them coming out to open too much, too far. Now, as you look at that, I have a little bit of gap between the valve and the housing. Now, 
obviously when the, on the induction that valve bends open because of the vacuum created in the crankcase and then on the compression stroke that valve reed shuts back up would you turn that valve turn that reed around so it was it, it faces this side thus closed constantly or would you leave it like that so this is quite important because i'm not going to do this installation until you guys say to me the reed valve has to be completely flush with the mating surface or it needs it's fine if it bends down a little bit so please drop me a drop me a comment below and and, and help me out here because i don't know and i can't see anything in the literature about how that reed should should be Okay, um, when I did the gearbox rebuild, I had one washer left over. Oh shit. And uh, yes, it goes there. <laughs> so that's all good and dandy. I, I thought, oh crikey, where does it go in the gearbox? You know, that kind of thing. Right, I'm going to put you on your stand and we'll rebuild, we'll build that piston up. And we'll get it on the conrod and crack on. Okay. Right, okay, so let's get the spring washer in there and you sort of sort of walk it down around and then bring it down run your finger around ooh uh so it pops out of the top ring slot and into the bottom ring slot like so now I need to just funny that around a little bit to that notch wherever it is There it is. So that's all. Sorry. Uh, that's there. Okay, cookie. See the pin there? So that springs in place. And let's put. Let me let me straddle here. That's that's better. We can see what we're doing now, can't we? So rings. That's the keystone edge. That's the flat edge. So this piece goes on the bottom. So we'll put that on there very gently pull that ring over and work your way around very gently because the last thing you want to do is snap the ring and they are very fragile okay let's very gently just gingerly get it into position like so i'm going to come down with oh shit <laughs> didn't work did it all right doesn't matter just Pop it out of there, bring it down a bit, and then work it around like so. <laughs> Bloody gloves, oh, that's no good, is it? Stupid. Okay, where's the edge of that? On the edge of heaven. Let's put some light on the subject. Ah, I can see what I'm doing now. Okay, let's just bring that out and around. Deal it in. Uh, come on. Oh, God, I've got to take these gloves off. It's no good. I'm going to have bits of rubber stuck all around, all around my rings, aren't I? <laughs> now the bone. There we go. We'll pop that ring in. Uh, where's the notch? There's the notch there. That's where it should be. So as it goes... As it slides up into the bore, if you like, these rings will compress around that locating pin uh, thus. Now, I, because there's not really a lot of difference in the size of these, of these rings, I'm wondering if that's going to work with that spring um, ring inside there. Because it seems to me, when, when I compress this into there, that's sitting quite proud. And, yeah, oh well, I'm just going to go with the flow, see what happens. Oops. Right, that is the castellated side. That is the flat side, the flat side at the bottom. There we go. So we'll stick that side on there and just run around the top very gently. Don't pull it too far because it will just snap like a twig. Come on, 
pretty gently. There we go. That's simple enough, wasn't it? Where's the groove? There it is. Yep. Yeah, that feels better. That closes right up as it should do. But this one... I cannot get that to close right up, and that's going to be too tight. That is going to be too tight. I'm just going to dry fit it in the barrel and see how we get on. Put a bit of oil on it. I've got some two-stroke oil down there. Okay, I'm going to pause it there. Right, I'm just applying with my fingertip some two-stroke oil, making sure these are all lined up with their pegs. Bottom one is. Where's the top one? There's the top one. I'm going to put a little bit of two-stroke oil on there just to keep things lubed up. All it means is it'll, it'll smoke quite a bit on initial start-up. Where are you? Keep moving out the camera, don't I? Stupid boy! Okay, let's get that nice and neatly and smothered. So now I've gone over this piston and the barrel and the bore. Um, with a nice, completely clean, lint-free rag, which is good. Let's just check that again. There's the pin there, and the pin there. Now, on the head, on the barrel itself, you got. There's no need for ring compressors because you have a chamfered edge, which will close the rings up as you push it in. That's how I go. Okay, that was the bottom of the engine. That's the bottom. There's the arrow at the bottom. Let's have a go at getting that in there. Okay, that's that one. Let's sit it on its, on its head. Where is that mark? There is that mark. That is pretty darn tight, you know. You think cannons going off? Flipping heck. Where is that mark? Oh, there it is. Will that go in there? I do not want to crack that ring. <clears throat> Supplied in that kit, the bottom ring is a, is the wrong ring because <clears throat> they both got the same markings on. I'm going to have to get in contact with the guy that sold me that. Right. <clears throat> and just see what's going on. Well, I can fit that bottom ring without that spring ring in behind it but for what it's worth <clears throat> that is bloody tight and that shouldn't be that tight <clears throat> Rah. did you get the hammer out? I reckon hammer number three will sort that out won't it? <laughs> Oh, it stopped screaming at your tellies. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, that's ridiculously tight. Yeah. Yeah, now. Yeah, now. Take me to the stars above. My my guesses were correct from the start. That's lined up, that's lined up. It just won't compress any further. Because both those rings are pretty much the same size, aren't they? Oh, arse! Let's try putting it in the other way around. 
simply because again the flipping cannons going off. Trying to take the dog out for a walk earlier. Poor little sod. Right, let's get that there and get this ring and gap. Where is it? There. This is turning into quite a faff, isn't it? First ring. Is in. I want to turn the piston round so I can see that the mark is in fact in line with there. It just doesn't close up fully. It's simple as that. Oh, we're in. Okay. Oh my god, no way, that shouldn't be that tight. Not in a million flipping years. <laughs> I can't even push the thing in, that's, that's, yeah, no, nah, that's not right. Can't even turn it around. No, that's coming out of there. That is ridiculous. Bloody ridiculous. Oh, for goodness sake. Let me just take that spring ring out of there. I don't want to score the bloody side of this ring up piston. Come on, be nice. Play nice, Steve. Yeah, that spring ring is doing literally nothing apart from acting as a flipping spacer. Okay, let's pop that piston back in, that ring back in. Okay, let's try a dry fit again. Uh, I don't know. Piston. Put it in the right way, you dick. That's, that's down. Oh, that it was down. Okay, first ring. Straight in. Second ring. Who air misses? Where is it? Where's that bloody? There it is. There's the notch. Let's wind that in there. Come on. It's better. Damn, it's still bloody tough. I know it's going to be it's new and all that, but at least I can move it now. Just. That's tight. Okay, well, what do you do, guys? Can you please drop me a drop me a thing? Is that essential? This this spring ring. Is that essential because it's so flipping tight as it is? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what what you would do. Uh, I'm not really overly happy with that, to be fair. I mean, it's fine with just the two rings on it, but with that spring ring, it just won't go. It, well, it goes in, but it's it's so bloody tight. It's, it's stupid. Okay, right. I call it quits there. I think and crack on. Ah. <sighs> Right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fit it as is without that spring ring uh, for the time being. If at such point in the future it's mucking around, needs some compression or whatever, which I can't, I can't see how or why, I will endeavour to pop the head off again, barrel, and... Uh, Try 
once it's once it's bed in there might be a little bit more play in there if you see what I mean once it's bed in and then I can just re fit that spring then so that's what I'm going with um, I don't have a lot of choice at the moment um, yeah I might be rushing it but I'm well I'm not but it would be nice just to flip in have the right rings in there wouldn't it the two different size two different thickness rings that would be absolutely great wouldn't it but at this moment in time i don't know about luxury right baby models let's get a grip i'm just going to wind these in a bit see where they go to I seem to have about four mil of thread sticking out of there let's do it up a little bit yeah that's gone tight that's pretty much exactly the same that one to be fair okay that's those two now I can't remember which one of these two on this side that I had to drill out that piece of thread, do you remember? Because the one of the bolts had sheared off. Well, they're pretty all much, pretty much exact. That one's gone in a little bit further than the other three, but I'm not really overly concerned about that. Okay, gasket time. I'm putting this on dry, there's going to be no sealant on this bottom one, simply because I can't be asked. No, it's um, it's not overly essential. But shall I leave it like that for putting the piston on, uh, the barrel on? Is that better? You see better there? Okay. Right, barrel. Where's barrel? Where's barrel? I'm just going to re moisten the barrel with the old two stroke oh my god yeah that's that's good <laughs> dirty boy dirty boy church on sunday for you my boy <clears throat> okay that's that let me just give my big shiny one a bit of oil as well got the two little we put the cotter pin in already. The two little clips are on either side. None of them flew off in, in different directions, so that's a plus. Always best to try and wear gloves doing this kind of thing because it's less contamination. Where the hell is that one gone? Less contamination going onto the piston. I can't see where that notch is. <laughs> Bonus notches! If I spin the ring round with this side up in the air, swing around like you just don't care, it should find. Where the bloody hell is it? Ah, there it is. It's that one. Excuse my patass. Where the hell? I can't bloody find it. There. Let's keep that one still. And there. I'm making hard work of this, aren't I? Right, exhaust port down. Arrow on the piston down. Let's slide that on those four studs. Gently compressing them rings. First one first, obviously. Come on, you little sausage. Should pop in. That's better. That's popped in. 
Where's the second notch? There it is. Am I getting in your way? Just tell me off. Okay. Tell me to the stars above. Take me to the stars above. Mm. Okay, we're in. Plus, my blue glove has gone in as well. Come on! Okay, that should slide in there nicely. Like so. Beautiful. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, let's put the front end of the engine up on a block here. So we can get a better look at it. Let's get some this lubricant off of there. Now, I have two, two types of head gasket. I have an original copper, thus, and the ones that came with the barrel and piston kit, that's a steel one. Now, I'm going with the copper one, just because. Okay, I, I do, this is more springy if you like more more pliable isn't it i know once it's squashed it's squashed but i think that's still one i don't know answer on the postcard what would you fit a or b i'm going for a right let's stick him on there i don't think there's any right or wrong way to put that that um sort of recess i'm sticking it outwards i'm putting it out there there we go okay and now, the end is near. Oh, it's starting to look like an engine now. Look at that. Now, I don't believe there's any washers that go on there because these these head nuts have got the um, splayed out seat on there, isn't it? And they're little, little locky nuts as well, let's see. Okay, that's 10 mil. Where's my 10 mil winder? Oh, where's my ten mil winder? Come on, Spinnytronics, right there you are. My ten mil winder. Oh, oh, baby. Let's get me nuts in there. Easy enough. Why isn't that doing up? There it is. It were me being stupid. It's a bit tight. I reckon that there was a bit, a bit of a burr on one of those studs. Oh, this is, to me, this is the best part of the job, getting the head on. Getting the piston in there, getting the head on. Jobs are good. Oh, that's where the lock nut's starting to bite. That's why it's getting tighter. You stupid boy. Stupid boy. Isn't it exciting? Well, now I don't think I've forgotten anything this time. <laughs> just going to hand tighten them. And then when you tighten them up, I've got to just got to read the book, see what the torque is. And you go crisscross, you get top, dip, dip, back up to there. Or something like that. As long as you do it in that fashion. Fine. Right, that's hand tight. I'm going to leave that there. Oh, it's getting good, isn't it? Let me just turn you off there, and then we will get the torque wrench out and torque it up. Okay, you saw there, six to eight and a half foot-pounds. Right, that's Newton, so that's what I want. Eight and a half foot-pounds. Five, seven. So I need that zero halfway. No, on the five, which is basically halfway around. You go zero to nine. So I'm putting that mark there, which is between the six and the four. So that's the five. Um, and you've got seven there and nine there. So that is six pound. No, it isn't. Seven, nine. What did I say? Between six. That's seven pound. Oh, it's between what was it, six and eight point 
two or something, wasn't it? So let's go seven. Right, so the zero is on the seven. So that's what I want. Okay, there you go. Number seven, zero. Tighten up the nut. That's seven foot pounds. When I talk them up, let's do... Just going to nip them first. Oh, that one's nipped a bit more than the other one. Okay. Okay, let's start. I mean to go on. That one. That one. That one. Brilliant things, aren't they, tall wrenches? Yeah, there we go. Right, that's that job sorted. If it's not one thing, it's another, isn't it? Uh, I suppose that's just the problem with having availability of parts these days. You have to go uh, non-gen sometimes. And I purchased this lovely brand new kickstart, but there is a problem with it, and it's a big problem. There is the shaft, okay. This piece rotates... The spring's in there. This piece rotates as you kick the engine over, okay? And it even says kickstart there for, th for people that don't know. Okay, so you've got that there, splines, space, splines. So you have that which goes over the splines, obviously. Let's put some light on, it might focus a bit better. And then you wind the bolt up, and the bolt sits in that channel there. So that has to be properly on there, but as you can see, it's hitting that piece has to be flush with there but you get on so far you get just over halfway and this piece here is sticking out so that hits the plastic and that isn't anywhere near on halfway so I, effectively I've got to grind down this so it's the same level as that okay and I've got to grind it round all the way because as obviously you, you turn the kickstart out, <coughs> let me try and do that one end, I can't do, uh, then that piece there would be effectively rubbing against there, absolutely gouging it to death. So I have got to grind off all that, all around there, so it's flush with that face there. Otherwise, that's scrap metal. Really pissed me off that because I'm flying along and you know you get little hurdles. I know you get little hurdles. That's fine. I can deal with those. But come on, people that are selling these spares for these bikes, make sure they flipping well fit. It came in a Suzuki bag actually, so I don't know. It can't be. It can't be an original, can it? It just can't be. So I reckon a bit of bodgery's gone on there. Okay, I better start grinding and then put some paint back on there. I might even remove that paint so it's the right colour. It shouldn't be black, should it? I'll see how we get on. Right, I've got some grinding to do. I don't flipping know.